Our first guests tonight are one of Hollywood's funniest couples who you know from their films like Thunder Force, Super Intelligence, The Boss, and Tammy. They produced the documentary Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed, which begins streaming on Netflix tomorrow. Let's take a look. Bob liked the thrill of watching a new student smile with a fresh, new, beautiful painting. Bob would just make him so happy, it's, it's unreal. It's like, man, did I do this? I couldn't have. Yes, you did. There's a lot going on besides painting, and I think people are aware of that and they enjoy that. Please welcome to the show, Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone. It's lovely to see you both. Ah, Hi, good to you? see you. So, um, first of all, uh, like I said, it's great to see you. Melissa, you've been on the show before. Ben, it is your first time. I'm so happy to have you guys here together. And together is where you spent uh, most of, I guess, the last year in Australia. How did it treat you? Oh, very nicely. I have to say, we kind of really, um, we got in there at an amazing time. And at first, when they were like, you know, would you consider going to Australia to work? I was like... No, like we can't, we can't go down the street. I can't move a family across the world that's insane. Yeah, we can't go to Australia. We can't like, go to Trader Joe's. Guys, this is nuts. We can't go to Trader Joe's. We can't go to blah, 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 blah. And then our 14 year old's like, we should leave tonight. <laughs> Get me out of Zoom classes. We should leave tonight. We were like, wait, let me call somebody. And uh, it was kind of great. You know, it's a, it's a friendly, it's a chatty, friendly, uh, a very Midwestern place. kind of town. Yeah, so it's like place. we're both yeah. Midwestern. Like, you know, you go down a grocery aisle and you're you're going to have like three full conversations just about random stuff. Yeah. About bananas. You bananas. like those bananas? Okay. See, this Look is like great. I was going to ask if you guys can do the accent now. That was really good, Ben. Melissa, I heard you can't do it. I think I think I can do a few things, but then any Australian's like, that's awful. Like, I like narrow. Because they yeah. put it O I R at the end of <laughs> the narrow, <laughs> and then I I we shave with rise up lights. Yeah. Oh, that's rise up lights. Rise up lights. Rise up lights really fast is. Oh, I've got some rise up lights. Rise up lights. Max <laughs> said, "Don't move your mouth." This is very very mister. helpful. Hey, I want to yeah, ask this uh, when you guys when you guys travel across the world or whenever you travel together, because Ben, uh, you famously played an air marshal in Bridesmaids. For my money, <laughs> one of the funniest uh, movie scenes that ever took place on an airplane. When you guys travel together, is it jarring for other people on the flight? Um, I think they're always a little bit like, ha ha! <laughs> and they're like, and they, or they're like, oh my God, you guys got married after that? And I was like, well, we were married. They're like, right. Well, one time, one time a drunk uh, guy did say, uh, hey, you gonna keep us safe? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll try to. And he goes, seriously, are you gonna keep us safe? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, what do you say at that? I was like, it was a, it was a movie. <laughs> you, uh, you mentioned you were both uh, Midwesterners, and, and I was aware that you guys met working together at the Groundlings in L.A., but then you actually hadn't met then. You had met back when you were growing up in, in Illinois. We had had an encounter. I think I can call it that. Which was, I've never called it. <laughs> we're breaking it's news here. Very, it's getting very nighttime. Oh. Um, we, I went to college at Carbon, uh, SIU Carbondale, uh, Southern Illinois, which is where Ben grew up. He's three years younger than me. So I was a freshman when he was still in high school. And when we, we became friends uh, in LA, like a week into it, he was like, oh my God, I know who you were. And I was like, no, you don't. You would never recognize me. No, and he's like, no, I did. I, I, I think I know who you were. And I said, and he goes, no, I was afraid of you. And I was like, oh my God, that was me. Yeah. When, once, once I mentioned that she uh, struck terror in certain people, she was like, yep, that was me. Cause she was very, very goth, very, and all my uh, you know, friends who were of that age were like, oh my God, I wish my mom would let me dress like her. You know, <laughs> and, so. and really all I was doing is I was so hot because in Southern Illinois in like August to commit to a full length cape <laughs> and like opaque tights, you're digging in in a way that Nobody should. So Ben, the first time you laid eyes on your wife, she was caped. Is this what we're hearing? Yeah, it was probably the dead of summer, and she had a very heavy cape <laughs> and a, 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 a kind of a nice, a nice uh, shade of blue hair. That's a, well, you know. And his eyes just went to hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys um, started. I think a lot of us had to find ways to entertain ourselves over the past eighteen months. 
Uh, you started a movie club uh, with some of your friends, a thematic movie club, and you were like very much at the beginning of it because you've really charged through a lot of films. It, yeah. it started with, we were just like, we're not, um, I'm just grabbing fruit all day with Clorox wipes, which by the way, don't do that. But in the beginning, I think we were all like, I don't know, how do you, how, how clean is clean? And we were realizing like we weren't having any connection to anybody when we were all so, I mean, as we all did. And so we're like, let's Zoom and we'll have like Friday night drinks with a couple people. And then literally they're like, oh, well, we all know, let's add a couple people, add a couple people. And Ben said, uh, he's like, my brain's going to mush. I need to do something. I'm going to start and watch every single best picture winner from the Academy Awards. Yeah, from we decided to start in 1960. And it's that sort of thing, you know, when the pandemic started, we were all gonna take piano lessons and <laughs> learn a bunch of languages. And I'm gonna, oh, trig, you got it, trigonometry. I got I'm gonna get my master's, yeah. although I never got past freshman year in regular college, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> but, uh, so, but it actually is because, because it turned into this really fun thing. We've, I think we've watched, you know, definitely over 50 best picture no i think so we're in far. this we're in, we're past 55 I think. yeah wow. yeah is we there one the uh that is there one you can say hey you probably haven't seen this one it's better than you've heard you should definitely watch it Ooh, there's there's a lot of great ones i think just remembering how uh, like re-watching things that you've seen so many times but you didn't and like you when we watch it during the week on our own and then we meet there's a there's a q and a Great. There are costumes and there Trivia are prizes, components. very stupid uh, <laughs> prizes given. But I think like watching Terms of Endearment again, yeah. watching Kramer versus Kramer. In the Heat of the Night. In the Heat Sydney of the Night, Poitier, my night. God. Oh my gosh. Those are, uh, all three of those are, are, those are all Marvel movies. People don't remember. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. And then and actually having fun, but also people being like watching a movie, talking about it with a bunch of different filmmakers and actors and producers and writers like you don't you know you don't really get to do that since college and like it's just been it's been so fun and so it's a lot of laughs and you sort of you know by accident learn a lot of stuff too so it's and really then there's fun. a few that you're like ah <laughs> sorry we won't, but we won't name names but there are some turds in there <laughs> there's some turd best pictures <laughs> sorry but we said we weren't he said we weren't gonna name it's turds. he's got Toothpaste on his eyebrows. <laughs> no, oh, God. my God. So oh, you guys. That, but you good, start out a movie with toothpaste <laughs> on, on somebody's close up, and I'm like, I'm out. It was <laughs> not. Hey, uh, so you guys, uh, well, I've been writing partners for a long time. Um, I don't know, is this the first, is the Bob Ross doc the first time you guys have produced a documentary together? Yeah. Yeah. It's and so too. what brought it about? Well, you know, I'm uh, super interested in Bob Ross and, and have loved him for a long time. And I actually wanted to write a biopic about him, uh, half because I'm interested and half because she's always wanted me to have a perm. So I really do. So I was, and so I did your basic, you know, cursory, how do, what do you find? You know, we, we no longer go to the microfiche, you know, you go <laughs> just and look on Google and like, all right, Bob Ross news or whatever. And um, there's nothing there. So it was really interesting to find it in this day and age, you can find, I'm sure if we Google you, there's zillions of pages of stuff and you'll be like, I don't even know what some of this is. Um, but there was is, nothing. Yeah, which is just so we were like, wait, how, how can anybody that, that well known, you know, for this many years, there's only like three small bites of information. So it just made us really kind of start to wonder what, what is the story there? And then we met these, you know, great documentary filmmakers and they were like, you know, are you guys thinking of doing anything? They they had just done Lorena, and um, and then you know we said, what what about Bob Ross? He's kind of like we're currently down like this wormhole of like what is the story, and they just they loved it, and they went. It's such a different process. They went right into kind of this like investigative research. We're going. It's feet on the ground, knocking on doors. It was like it was exciting. And there's a certain poetry to it because. The way that uh, our filmmakers, Joshua and Stephen, um, you know, described it to us, they said, you know, sort of something akin to, you know, the movie reveals itself to you. And I was like, well, we should do that. <laughs> was like, That's what I was going to say. It really does, though. And it's, it is fascinating, like what you say. I think we all just assume we know everything about him. And then you realize you don't actually know a single detail other than his hair or that he paints. And it's really a wonderful documentary because of how much uh, we find out. Oh, thanks. Oh, good, glad you liked it, but.
You yeah, guys, they do. Uh, it is so lovely to see you as always. Uh, I wish you the best, and hopefully next time I can see you in person. I yeah, hope the same thing. Your hair right. looks fantastic. Still great hair. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Ross, Happy Accidents, Betrayal, and Greed. Begins streaming on Netflix tomorrow. Nine Perfect Strangers is streaming now on Hulu.